243 versus 270. I hope you're hungry because we're serving up venison here on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. We usually talk about battle rifles and intermediate cartridges and handgun rounds, but today we're going to do uh, more peaceful ammunition that you can use to kill deer. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you are absolutely right. Uh, we are shifting gears a little bit today and you know, talking about a couple deer cartridges. And if you need to load up for hunting season, which is fast approaching, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon your next order at ammo.com but yeah the 243 and the 270 are you know highly regarded as some of the you know premier deer cartridges out there that are not labeled 308 or 300 win mag yeah yeah i mean it's nice to not compare something to 308 for a change on this podcast but right. uh, if 308 is kind of the vanilla round these are these are truly dedicated deer hunting cartridges that you would never find on a battlefield unless uh unless one of the armies is very shortly stocked on on proper combat ammo. Yeah, absolutely. This is not something that has ever been adopted by any military as far as a, you know, a frontline battle cartridge. These are, you know, made specifically for sporting purposes, whether that be varmint hunting, you know, deer hunting, or, you know, with 270, you can even get up to elk. Uh, it's got enough oomph to do that. And uh, of course, the the 270 became you know as famous as it did from the writings primarily of Jack O'Connor. Uh, he was a huge proponent of the 270 and really kind of propelled that to the next level. And uh, you know the 243, uh, you know, of course, is descended from our favorite cartridge, like you mentioned, the 308. Interesting. Yeah, and I think I think we got to touch on on that right away. That because neither of these have ever been. And- most likely will never become military rounds yeah. right away ammo availability is going to uh, be affected by that lake city isn't spewing out millions of these en masse yeah you're absolutely right about that uh you know but i will say as far as sporting cartridges are concerned you know the 243 and the 270 are you know just quintessential uh as far as sporting rounds are concerned so i mean if you roll into your you know your local sporting goods uh store you should be able to pick up some boxes of these but you're not going to find like that cheap surplus ammo like you were talking about from lake city uh that you know just didn't quite make mil spec uh that you can get for well you know, it used to be pennies on the dollar, not so much anymore. Uh, yeah. But uh, dimes on the dollar. No. Dimes on the. I like that. That's a good one. Uh, but yeah, you'll be able to find it. But mostly, what you're going to be finding is hunting ammunition. Uh, you're not going to find as many like cheap full metal jackets as you would with like military or handgun ammunition. And to that end, you're kind of well served because even though the 308 you can get with most any kind of hunting bullet now. Uh, 270 and 243, you're going to find all those neat high-tech polymer tips. Oh, yeah. You're going to find all copper monolithic projectiles like the TSX and the TTSX. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're going to find plenty of FMJs that you just want to use for target practice. I know Privy Partisan supplies huge quantities of both of these and just, you know, standard FMJ, not fancy and not overly expensive ball ammo. Definitely. No, you definitely have quite an array. And, you know, they've done a lot of work with these bullets. Uh, of course, the, the 270 firing the point .277, uh, you know, diameter bullet, otherwise known as a, a 7 millimeter, uh, which, of course, was just recently picked up by the uh, the U.S. military with the uh, the advent of the 277 Fury. That's, that's a topic for another conversation, uh, for another for sure. podcast. But, uh, you know, the 7 millimeter, of course, getting some love. And then, you know, this, the 6 millimeter, the 270. 43, uh, you know, getting some action in there as well. Uh, and, you know, these bullets you know, have very similar capabilities, uh, especially in shorter ranges, which I think is very interesting because you'd expect the 270 to be, to be just superior because it's a bigger cartridge. And to that end, it does have, how do I phrase this? It does have greater long distance uh, abilities. But yes. I'm not quite certain. Oh, I am certain most hunters wouldn't notice the difference because the range at which 
the 270 starts to outperform the 243 is pretty far out there. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's right around the 700 yard marker. And that's quite a shot, uh, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't think that I can shoot that far yet. Uh, you know, I'd love to work on it. But, uh, you know, with my current capabilities, I can tell you if I'm hunting, I am definitely not taking a 700 yard shot. I'll be trying to get a little bit closer than that. But okay. that that is the point where the 270 starts to be a bit superior to the 243 in terms of trajectory uh, and things of that nature. Uh, the 243 goes subsonic right around uh, that 700 yard line while the, the 270 just keeps on trucking. How far about does the 270 stay supersonic until? Oh gosh, I would have to look up the ballistic uh, data on that. You I got me. Put you on a spot. Yeah, you could at least say about 150 more yards. Of Easy. Supersonic. Easy. Yeah. Uh, I confident it could remain out there to eight, nine hundred yards. I'd have to look at the ballistic calculator to make sure, uh, but I know that it that higher ballistic coefficient bullet that the 270 fires really helps retain its kinetic energy and its muzzle velocity downrange. So within the ranges. Uh, that they're both effective over i think that the 270 does offer a slightly flatter trajectory that that you might have an easier time aiming accurately well i mean in shorter ranges uh, if i'm not mistaken i think the 243 is actually a little bit superior because it's lighter and it's going a bit faster so it doesn't have that time where you know gravity can start pulling it down more uh versus you know the 270 which is going just a smidge slower uh but uh, you know, both of them are incredibly flat shooting, uh, regardless. And we're only talking about an inch or two difference between the two. Now, someone could say well, that could be the difference between a hit and a miss. And you're not wrong, but for practical purposes, one to two inches is not going to make a big difference as far as, you know, point of impact on a deer sized target. True. I mean, that's an animal with a vital area about the size of a basketball. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a little margin of error. The deer's anatomy so graciously provides it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that that's the real difference, in my opinion, in these two cartridges is, is where you want to hunt, not just in range, but like what type of game animals do you want to go after? Because I think the 243 really makes a better varmint round uh, and kind of, you know, uh, what's the what's the term here? It, it you know, on the side it does deer cartridges as well. Whereas the 270 is really aimed at those larger game animals like the uh, like the deers and the elk. Interesting. Then we got to talk about. Um, I know, I know we both hate the phrase, but we we have to use it. Stopping power. Oh, yep. Uh, yep. One would have to assume the 270 has more just as far as uh, impact energy is concerned. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, you know, first off, you've got a bigger bullet. Uh, it's going to make a bigger hole. Uh, it's going to, you know, impart more kinetic energy into the target. And it absolutely is going to be more powerful, which is one of the reasons why it's not as effective as a varmint round, because it's so much bigger. Uh, you know, your, your, heav your lightest, excuse me, 270 round typically starts around 100 grains, whereas with a 243, you can shoot as light as 55 grain, which is what the 223 Remington typically shoots. Uh, it's no coincidence. Yeah, funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but you know, with those bigger animals like deer and elk, you need that kinetic energy to do it. And the heavier loadings for 243 can definitely get there. You have like 100 grain bullets that they, they load for 243 that definitely have the power to take down a deer within about 250 yards. Whereas the 270, you can, you know, extend that out to about 500 yards if memory serves correctly as far as the kinetic energy is concerned and so yeah i mean like you said we don't typically like the word stopping power but the 270 has it uh and that's just all there is to it huh so then uh, actually hitting the target aside it sounds like the 270's effective range is actually about double that of the 243 on deer absolutely uh and it, when we start talking elk uh, the 243 isn't even in the discussion for elk it simply isn't big enough it doesn't have the kinetic energy you need to ethically harvest an elk uh, unless we're talking point blank range and i don't think anybody wants to engage a elk at, at point blank range that seems like a bad idea to me yeah 
Yeah, that's a surly critter when it loses its temper. Mm -hmm. uh, that rack, I don't want to see it anywhere except on my wall, and uh, not close in person, especially while it's still uh, while it's still breathing. Dave, you're absolutely right. The 270 has the stopping power to take on these larger game animals, where the 243 really isn't even in the equation because it just doesn't have the power that it needs to get the job done. The 270's got the range, especially when, you know, hunting, you know, maybe in the Great Plains uh, or things like that, where you're going to take those longer shots on things like mule deer, antelope, or even elk. Uh, whereas the 243 is a much closer, up close and personal round when you're talking those bigger game animals. And that's not some place I want to be uh, while those things are still moving. So, yeah, I mean, the 270 has got it for big game. Wow, as the 243 has a much flatter trajectory for small game with the lighter bullet weight. So there's really that's really where the parity comes and the overlap is in the deer department. So what I'm hearing is that there's not really a great advantage to picking the 243 if you hunt in very densely wooded areas like in New England and, and in the Midwest, um, where you're never going to see your, your, your quarry more than 250 yards away. Yeah, I think I think you said that wrong. I think you meant the 270 on that. Uh, but yeah, yeah absolutely. No, you're right. And the 243 offers some more, you know, it benefits, especially at short range, which is less recoil. Uh, and it's a pretty significant, honestly. It's about 70% less recoil between the two cartridges, uh, with 243 being the lighter of the two. And that really makes it a lot more comfortable to shoot. Uh, and I know people will often say, oh, you just need to tough it out, right, when it comes to recoil. But recoil anticipation is a real thing and if you're taking a long shooting session working on those marksmanship skills the 243 is going to be the better choice uh, it's going to be more gentle on the shoulder and you're less likely to develop a flinch which will mean that more typically you'll be more accurate because you don't have that you're not diving the muzzle down at the last second in anticipation of that recoil coming back at you yeah you know, we all like to think that we're all recoil proof but Honestly, there's no need, there's no need to endure it if you don't have to. If you're never going to benefit from the 270s longer range accuracy, then uh, why why subject yourself to all that kick? No, I agree completely, and and that's one of the things where understanding what your environment you're going to be in is so critically important for cartridge selection, especially when you're talking hunt, hunting. Now, you know, if you're going to be up in Montana, North Dakota, uh, you know, in the Great Plains of Kansas or something like that you're going to need something that's got a longer range to it where the 270 will shine. But like you were saying, if you're going to be up in Michigan or even in my home state here in Indiana, where it's highly unlikely you'll ever be shooting over anything over 300 yards, there's really not that much benefit to going to the 270 unless, of course, you have one already. Uh, like, you know, you inherited your, your grandfather's hunting rifle or your dad handed it down to you or something along those lines. It doesn't mean you need to go out and sell the thing. Unless, of course, you want to sell it to me for cheap. But, uh, you know, otherwise, if you're just looking to buy a new rifle and you don't have either of these and you're going to be shooting mostly short range, the 243 really can get the job done. Are either of these preferable to the 308? You, a huge 308 fan. You know, I think the. The benefit of the 308 is obviously there's a lot of bullet ver versatility uh, in that. Would I take one over a 308? Me personally, no, just because I'm a 308 fan. That's just me. That's what I grew up on. It's what I know and what I understand. Uh, but honestly, looking at the 270, there's definitely some benefits over the 308 with the 270. Again, recoil is a big one. And it the 270 really has a nice flat trajectory. That longer bullet, uh, that higher ballistic coefficient is really attractive, uh, especially at long range. Uh, and it definitely, it, it'll do the work. I mean, I know that O'Connor went to Africa uh, with a 270 and he took all different sorts of, you know, game animals with that. And so, you know, it, it can get the job done. It's, I know here in America we love our 30 calibers, right? You know, our 308s and our 30 out sixes and our 300 wind mags. Uh, but mm -hmm. there's definitely something to be said for these seven millimeter projectiles. Well, we love our 30 calibers because our armed forces loves their yep. 30 calibers. But our armed forces aren't really so concerned with killing Bambi's mom. So that's, that's true. Well, it's something if you, if you have an automatic distaste for anything that isn't 30 cal, ask yourself why. You're, you're not going to invade Normandy anytime soon. That is very fair and a very good point, One Dave. Hope. Well, yeah, let's hope not, right? Uh, I'm not ready to break out the Higgins boats just yet. Uh, but 
<laughs> but no, it, it really does beg the question, is the 30 caliber too much for deer? Now, as we've said many times, overkill's underrated on this show. And I'm never going to say that you shouldn't hunt deer with the 30 cal. I mean, the 30 out six has long been used for deer, elk, caribou, bears, uh, you know, things like that. I'm not going to say that it's too much. You start talking 50 BMG, that's too much uh, for yeah. deer. Uh, but, you know, can you do the same job with a smaller bullet that has less recoil and is easier to shoot? Yeah, you can. Uh, and the 270, the seven millimeter really is getting it done. Ultimately, Chris and I can't say 30 cal is too much for deer because it would be the most un-American thing to insist. Sacrilegious. Imagine. Yeah, really. Even even Democrats get mad when you say something like that. <laughs> oh man, now you're now you're pushing the envelope on that one, Dave. <laughs> this is a very edgy ammo comparison podcast. Absolutely, no, we love we love it, and of course we love all our subscribers here, regardless of your political affiliation. We're just joking yeah. around. Yeah, unless you live in a country we can't ship to, in yeah. which case, eh, yeah, you know, yeah. you do you. Yeah. No, definitely. And you know, I think it really comes down to, you know, picking between these two, they're going to get the job done as long as you pick the right bullet and your shot placement is on point. And it just kind of comes down to, you know, which you prefer and what your intended range is going to be. That That's really, in my opinion, the crux of this decision between these two cartridges. So that's it. If you're comfortable keeping it within 250 yards and you want 70% less recoil, and the 243 is right where it's at. But if you want to go to 500 yards and and you uh, don't mind taking that heavier kick, then you could be a 270 boy. Definitely. And, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the 7mm cartridge is getting a lot of love right now, uh, you know, especially in the military and, you know, more so with new cartridges like the 6.8 Western coming out and the 270 WSM. Uh, so there's definitely more of a push towards that larger uh, caliber, but 243 will get the job done at short range and is a lot easier to shoot, a lot more comfortable, especially for younger shooters. Uh, that's always something to consider as well if you're going to be teaching the next generation, which of course you should be doing, uh, because you know a right is a right only if it's you know enforced and if you use it. And so we need to make sure we're teaching the next generation of shooters, and the 243 is a great round to train on. Um. Yeah, boy, there's another rabbit hole I could dive down towards <laughs> creating new shooting enthusiasts. Absolutely. Um, one thing, I don't even know where this fits into it, mm -hmm. but safe to assume the 243 is going to run you a little less money in the long run it's just because it has fewer materials in it. Just a little bit. It's not like drastic, uh, like going between, say, like a 308 and a 300 Win Mag. Uh, but yes, I would say typically your 243 will be a little less expensive than your 270, but not to the point where it's, you know, insanely dip between like 223 and 22 long rifle. Uh, you know, it's not that drastic of a price difference. But yeah, I would say the 243 is a little bit more economical. Fair enough. We always have to visit the hand loader corner. Oh, yes. At the ends of these podcasts. Now, oh, yes. First question Can I. Can I use 243 or can I use 223 brass to load 243? Is that a straightforward maneuver? No, it's actually 308 brass is what you need to do. Uh, so the 243 came from the 308 Winchester, whereas the 270 uh, came from the 30 ot 3, which was the progenitor to the 30 ot 6. So if you've got some extra 308 brass lying around that you're not loading, which I would question why you're not loading your 308 brass, but if you've got it and you're in a pinch, you can neck down your 308 brass to uh, your 243 caliber. That is how they did it, basically, how those crazy wildcatters did it back in the day at Winchester and how this round came to be. So, uh, you know, I don't have any 30-03 brass laying around. Uh, I don't... No, does anybody? I, I doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, but uh, so that's going to be a little bit more difficult as far as, you know, creating your own 270 brass. But, you know, 243 brass, if you had to in a pinch, you could reform your 308 brass. All right. So, so yeah, that's a slight advantage being able to use 308 brass. But then again, most people 
don't hand load. So That's true. Probably even put that out of your mind. Have you reloaded either of these, Chris? I haven't. I don't have a rifle in either of these cartridges. I hate, hate to admit it, but uh, we only recently allowed for center fire uh, rifle hunting here in Indiana, and so I didn't have really a reason to get one. Uh, you know, for hunting purposes here in in my state. Uh, am I looking at it in the future? Yeah, absolutely. I'd always love to add a new rifle to the collection, a new cartridge to reload for and play with. Uh, for me as a hand loader, that's that's the fun part, is really just optimizing those loads, finding what works best in your rifle. And both of these rounds give you a lot of versatility when it comes to that. Tons of different bullet options, like we talked about earlier. You know, you've got your FMJs, you've got your partitions, your ballistic tips, your soft points, whatever it is you want to shoot. Uh, in these bullets, bullet uh, calibers, you have access to that. And you can just make the perfect round for your rifle that you love to shoot and that just does a number on whatever target you may be looking at. So it's truly a case of not being able to do wrong if you pick either of these. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So even if you're just contemplating the idea of reloading it, make sure you pick up your brass uh, when you're at the range. You'll thank me later. <laughs> Neat. Well, gosh. Um, what else is there to say? You know, honestly, I can't really think too much about it, Dave. Uh, it, it just comes down to, you know, what you prefer. Uh, whether you like that lighter, faster bullet that the 243 offers, maybe you want to do some varmint hunting and moonlight as a deer hunter, or if you want to be a dedicated big game hunter, then the 270 is what you want. Uh, it can take on the deer, the elk. Maybe even a bear. I'm not sure that's my preference as far as a bear cartridge, but it'll do the job if you do your part. And, you know, that's really where it comes down to is what you want to hunt and, uh, you know, what ranges you expect to be hunting at. Love it. If only there were one website where I could buy both of these types of ammunition quickly and conveniently with fast shipping, though. You know, thankfully, thankfully there is, and that's ammo.com. And make sure oh. you, yeah, make sure you get all your ammo there. You've got that coupon code down in the description. Make sure you sign up for that. Get your twenty dollars off, and we will see you out at the range.